Hello, welcome to another episode of Cave Factory. This episode was obnoxious. For some reason, my world decided it would no longer load. Just dirt screen, and that was all as far as it would go. Uh, I eventually got it working again, obviously, but I, I literally had to download a new version of the game, copy my existing world over, remove the settings folder from my world folder. It was just this huge thing. So the upside is that we are now in um, the newest version of the mod pack. The downside is, is that those fucking tool tips are back. Ugh. I know how to make wooden planks. You don't, I, I'm a little bit beyond wooden planks, you piece of junk. Anyway. Um, yes, to kind of go over what we have done so far, I've done quite a bit of work back here, as you can see. So I've got the, um, we did all this in the last episode. I've got, uh, the crusher built. I've got the industrial squeezer built. I went ahead and upgraded my blast furnace to the improved fur furnace and added the preheaters to it. Uh, it is currently turned off. I did end up doing a second Coke oven. Um, they are all completely full of creosote, so we're not we're not making we're not making cold Coke right now. But that's fine. Um, we'll figure I'll figure out something to do with this creosote in a minute. But for right now, it's it's fine. Uh, obviously, I just used a pipe up here instead of building another one of these fluid pumps because the pipes are easy enough. And then I have an export and import cable uh, attached to them. There's one on the bottom here. You can just barely see them down there. Um, but they're the same. Import, Im Importing uh, coal in, or exporting coal into the Coke oven, importing the coal Coke out of it. Um, I built a charge, or I put down the charging station that I, I got given from somewhere um, so I could charge my backpack. I have nothing to use it on, but it's charged so um, then if you'll notice I've got uh, an item pipe coming out of this top coal oven coke oven and that's because I basically just had it pulling the coal coke out of there I took off the uh, import bus and just put it under there into here ran it straight into the crusher then out of the crusher into another item pipe that went straight into the squeezer and then from the squeezer, it went straight into a furnace. As you can see, it's got the induction heater on it and everything too. And then from the furnace, it went into uh, the system. So it just made graphite uh, ingots for me. Just one, two, three. Use them to go ahead and make the graphite electrodes. So those are the two that I made using the coal coke. And that's the one that I used made using the stamp. So I now have the electrodes, and we can work on the arc furnace, which is good. Um, I've also, what else have I done? Ah, I also went through and I found a chunk with crude oil in it, as you can see right here, crude oil reservoir. And I set up a pump jack, and then I set up an ender tank. These new ender tanks are kind of weird. They are directional, so you do have to set them on their side to be able to get fluid in and out of them. But, uh, yeah, this pumped oil, pumps oil into there. And then I ran the oil over to this tank here. And as you can see, it is completely full. So there's the, uh, the ender tank. I've got a fluid pipe coming out, putting it into there, and then another pipe coming out going into the refinery from Pneumaticraft. And this is full too. It's also turned off right now. But this I have making the liquid petroleum gas or LPG. Then the LPG goes in here. A little bit of coal gets turned into molten plastic. You then take the molten plastic and you just pour it on the ground somewhere. And it will eventually turn into the plastic sheets. And then from the plastic sheets you can then make the empty PCBs. So I've basically work, worked my way through. Here, I'll pull up the quest log for tech. So I basically worked my way through this. So we got the bucket of molten plastic. Got that. That's good. 
we got ourselves the plastic sheets. So we now have another charging station. Got the empty PCB, which gives me a UV light box. Um, I went ahead and made the etching acid bucket, which is just a bucket of uh, plastic with some monster parts in the pressure chamber. Gives us some random rotten flesh. And I went ahead and made an etching tank, which gives me a vortex tube. Which I actually made one of those because that's what that is right there. Um, I was using lava down here to heat this, but it like it burns out like instantly. And as you can see from right here, that's what was under here is a is lava, and now it's obsidian. So exposes empty PCBs to UV light, making them ready for processing in an etching tank. The longer you expose, the better the chance. But note, progress becomes slower as the process continues. You can configure a threshold at which PCBs are considered completed. You can set this low to process items quickly, accepting the chance of failed etching. Uh, and you can blast furnace some for another attempt. And we know what that is. So if we turn this on, these are all set to uh, activate on low. Low redstone. Okay, so as soon as that gets enough pressure... We'll just go ahead and stick this. It's almost a full stack. We'll just go ahead and stick them. Oh, we can only do one at a time. That's annoying. All right, well, we'll just leave it in there and, and forget about it. <laughs> so um, I did also go ahead and set up some mana generation over here. And, and as you can see, I basically have used the same basic idea as what I used in uh, Snowcraft. So if you remember, if you watched that series, same idea, endo flame, there's coal sitting right next to it. Uh, the coal comes out of the open crate, endo flame eventually picks it up and consumes it. Crate drops another chunk of coal. And while it's consuming it, I don't have the wand on me, uh, while it's consuming it, it fills this mana pool up with mana. Um, and I'm just I'm just basically just letting the mana pool fill up because we're going to need a bunch of mana for stuff. And uh, if we go in here and look at the magic tree, the next thing that we're going to need is mana steel, mana diamond, or mana pearl um, to get the next, to be able to unlock the next thing. So we might as well let it fill up and uh, then we can get that. Yeah, we've got uh, our automate mana production task or challenge, which we've technically done, but it's also stupid easy. I'm going to probably eventually go for the uh, the cake amoros, where it's, it's the cake. You put a cake down and it slowly eats the cake and it generates mana from that. But we're going to need, um, it says to use create, but I don't know how you would use create to do it. So we're going to do it with, uh, where did, how did, where did it? Uh, we're going to do it with uh, refined storage. I keep wanting to say applied energistics, and that's not what we have. Uh, I upgraded this to see if it would work a little bit better. Uh, it doesn't. doesn't do anything, as far as I can tell. Like, it still turns at the same speed. So, I don't know what that's for. Um, the other thing is I finally figured out... I finally figured out what this means. Um, so I made some ice, well, blue ice eventually, but I made some ice because as we know from Batania, you can take water, a water source block and you put it next to the pure daisy and you leave it alone for a little while and it'll turn into, and it'll turn into snow. And then if you take four snow blocks and you put it into the pressure chamber, it'll turn into ice. And then if you put ice back next to the pure daisy, it'll eventually turn into blue ice. It goes through packed ice and then blue ice. So I did that to get some blue ice, some soul soil that I'd already had. Um, I have a cat infestation from these villagers. But, so we have got the blue ice right over here. We've got the lava there, soul soil there. And as you can see, it generates random nether blocks. So there's some basalt. There's some nether quartz ore, which is what's really nice, is we're actually getting a supply of quartz ore or a supply of quartz, rather, that I don't have to keep going into the nether to get some. Gold ore, which is nice, but kind of cool. You know, netherrack, which we don't really need. But the best part of it is that we are getting randomly generating ancient debris. 
this is the second one that I've seen since I started this, this world instance. I'm so happy that it decided to pop up right now. But yeah, it'll just, it periodically just generates ancient debris. And then I've got the, um, the, uh, uh, I can never remember what that thing is called, but I've got one of those over there and it's, it's breaking the blocks. And then I've got the advanced item collector here. So as the block is broken, it's getting picked up and put into the chest right here. And then from the chest, it's, it's connected to the storage system. So... Uh, so so nice. Um, I've also got a bunch of villagers. Uh, all of them all in here. Uh, I did get the iron farm all set up and going. I think you guys saw that in the last episode. So we currently have 118 blocks of iron. 175 blocks of gold. You know, 115. Like, look at, look at the nether. Look at the nether. <laughs> That's great. Huh, they finally fixed one probe. Anyway, um, and I need to check because I haven't looked in a while. We have five ancient debris. Five of them. I can actually start making some netherite. Um, and I've been picking up, because uh, cobalt is another thing that can generate in there. So I've been tossing the cobalt into the smeltery because there's no other really good way to... Here, if we look, nether cobalt ore. We can throw it in a blast furnace that gets us an ingot. We can blast it using um, create that gets us an ingot. We can throw it in an arc furnace, which gets us two ingots. Or we can smelt it, which gets us two ingots. Or we can throw it in the foundry, which I don't actually have. And it gets us an ingot and a half and a little bit of iron, which I don't need the iron. So, like, this is... As what I have access to right now, this is the best thing that I can do. Um, I might, when I get an arc furnace, I might start throwing them in there, um, because then I don't have to, I don't have to do the whole thing, you know, debt and then pour it out and all that. So, um, but let's go through the rest of this. Uh, I did make one of these, some of these glass blocks. They are witherproof blocks, so that gets. The uh, wither skeleton skull. I still need two more of them to even think about spawning a wither. <sighs> that's that's going to be a little bit. And then in the factory tab here, I showed you guys the graphite electrodes already. So that gives me unbreaking three, which we can actually put these on the electrodes. So that'll be kind of cool. And then I went ahead and I collected up the materials for a refinery as well as for a diesel generator. I have no intention whatsoever of actually building either of those things. Oh, okay. Oh, that's obnoxious. Yeah, so you see that's got pressure now. This has got heat, but it's the diesel tank is full, so it can't actually do anything more. I'd have to pump that diesel out and put it somewhere, but I don't know where to put it. Or I could just void it, I suppose, is the other thing. So to make the unassembled PCB, we have to take the empty PCB etching acid into an etching tank, which I happen to have right here. I made one already. And I think... Um, okay, yeah, so we put etching acid and insert... Et et ugh. Fill this with etching acid and insert empty PCBs which have been exposed in a UV light box. Can be heated above 50 C for progressively faster etching, but etching f acid will slowly be used when heated thus. Extract unassembled from the sides and filled from the top bottom. So it doesn't have to be heated. So I am just going to put it there. Let me grab one of these. I'm guessing we just... Put it in. Okay, so it can take more than one. That's good. All right. And then we put one of these guys in there. Etching progress. 4%, 5%. Okay, so it actually goes decently quick. Like, it, it doesn't, like, not... I guess if you wanted them quickly, it would... You would want to uh, 
do them quick, you know, faster. But if you don't really care, then... Let's make some more etching acid. So the way that we make these is with a bucket of plastic, two gunpowder, two flesh, and two spider. So we need four of each. Oh my god, this stupid tooltip. You just don't go away, do you? Like, I know how to play Minecraft. You do not freaking need to tell me. Is the most obnoxious thing with new installs. Well, let's tell you how to play the game. I know how to play the game. Oh, okay, I see. So we could take it out right now and put it in in there. It would just have a, a chance to not work. Huh. There we go. Now we just got to wait for it to process the items out. There's one bucket. And put that into there. And the other bucket should be showing up any moment now. There it is. Is there a way to... It will. Cool. So we can then put that in. Oh, and it even fills up visually. <laughs> cool. Neato. One of the things in this pack is lost trinkets, and I'm realizing, I realize now that I haven't actually shown this. But a few of them, basically as you play the game, you slowly collect these. And these are ones that I have available in addition to these. And you can look these up in JI, but there's no crafting for them because you just find them randomly. And one of the things that you find them for is trading. So when you're trading with villagers, you unlock these. So when I was trading with my engineer villager to get the uh, graphite electrode recipe, I unlocked a few of them. But uh, well, the ones that I have are this one, which cause which creepers that are targeting me don't actually explode. Um, they still disappear. And they still make the hiss noise, but they don't actually make an explosion. Weird. Uh, ember, which causes enemies that are attacking me to be set on fire. I don't know. I think that means enemies that hit me get set on fire, but I'm not sure. Um, Blaze Heart, which I am just straight out immune to fire damage, which is very nice. Especially because I'm going to have to go uh, fight some more blazes at some point. And I have Mind's Eye, which allows me to see invisible entities. I don't know what they mean by invisible entities, but I turned it on because, hey, the only way you'd see invisible things is if you have a thing that lets you see invisible things. Otherwise, you can't see invisible things. Um, I also have the um, obnoxious uh, step assist, which nobody likes. At least I hate it. Uh, movement speed, which is another thing that I dislike. Um, chance of dropping bones when killing animals. I don't know what that means. I think it's, it literally just gives you bones like you would get from a skeleton. And ghost, which is when you have invisibility, all entities and players cannot see you, even when you have armor and held items. This one would be amazing for building a guardian farm. Other than that, it's not really helpful. Because <laughs> it, it doesn't give you invisibility. You have to have it from another source. So, but... Anyway, um, and then these slots you can buy with just XP levels. That's that's why I've gone down to 28. If you're wondering why my XP changes all the time, it's not because I'm dying in between episodes, because you actually keep your XP in this pack uh, if you die. Uh, it's because I've probably bought a few more of those slots. And if I think of it, I'll, I'll uh, try to remember to tell you. And there's a unassembled PCB. All right, that gets us the Amadron tablet, which apparently does not actually work in this pack. After ordering stuff, you need to go to a height around 250 to update the delivery drone to make it TP to the chest. Anyway, now we can actually make a printed circuit board and progress further down this path here, which I'm probably going to go ahead and do. Okay, and we're just going to have to make those anyway, so... Uh, oh, okay. So we can make them in the pressure chamber. I'm not sure how you get this villager. Because I, I don't know what his um, workstation is. Yeah, I'm going to work on more of the tech tree. And probably uh, work on this. And probably work on that. 
I might go up this tree here because this will give me something to do with the uh, the the oil that I've got because like this is this is full of oil this is full of oil and my uh, my reservoir back there is like two billion millibuckets it's crazy there's there's still lots of oil so to have something to do with them all but that is what I'm going to work on I will check back in with you guys once I've made some progress on that. All right, guys, I've been a little bit busy. I have been working my way through the various challenges um, here in this, as you can see. Uh, one of the things that I want to start doing is I want to start working on refined storage, replacing the simple storage network with refined storage. Um, simple storage is nice, but I'm starting to reach a point where I really want to start getting these automators, the, these automatic craftings going. And... You know, going to need to progress into refined storage to do that. So to that end, I've been doing a few more things here and there, which I'll go over in just a second. But right, what I want to do right here is just go through what I've done um, so far in this. So I did make myself a crafting remote finally. So we get some lapis and nether quartz. Um, and we, of course, we can make the uh, refined storage version of it, which uses the crafting remote. As pretty much as I expected it would. Um, I also went ahead and built the distillation tower. So we get uh, a couple of those items. And that, of course, produced some butemen. Oops. So if we go on over into here, you can see I've moved all of my fluid storage, kind of centralized it here um, into what is effectively turning into my ref my immersive engineering workshop <laughs> if i grab a bucket now we can see what's actually in here so i've got crude oil and i've still got this set up with the same thing so i've got an ender tank here that's just pumping or just receiving crude oil being pumped in from the pump jack and then it's putting it into this tank and this tank and as you can see this one's getting filled up and out of this one it's pumping out into the distillation tower. So, yeah, as you can see, this one just goes on up. And if we look on inside here, we can see that uh, we're actually uh, full up. So we've probably got a clog somewhere. Let's go ahead and turn that off. So we quit using all of our energy. And there's the butemen. Um, so we can start working on making the asphalt concrete and stuff like that. We'll figure out what we're going to do with it. Oh, yeah, look at that. So I'm full up on gasoline. I'm full up on sulfurized diesel. And I'm, well, I've got a good good amount of di sulfurized diesel and a good amount of lubricant. This is um, a machine that if you put uh, lubricant into it, out of one of our buckets over here, uh, this guy, if you put this stuff into it, it will lubricate machines. So like we could put, put this next to the pump jack and it would make the pump jack run better. Um, I haven't really done much else back in here. Uh, I do need, still need to get the arc furnace set up. We've got our generator still going, but I did build this little contraption over here. And the point of this is this takes wheat, if I go in here and grab some, grab some wheat, turn the magnet off, otherwise it messes it up, um, and we throw the wheat into here, the millstone here will grind it down into wheat flour, I think is what it's called, and the wheat flour ends up on the depot, and then it gets washed, eventually, there, you just saw it just went, and the, the resulting dough gets pulled out into here. And then we can take the dough, and we can mix it with some lime dye and make slime balls. So this is pretty much the preparation that I have been making to get my hands on refined storage, because we're going to need a decent supply of slime, and relying on the random generation from... Uh, from dropping, you know, monster parts on the ground isn't going to cut it. So that's that's what I've been doing there. I still have this cat infestation. 
But so that's what I've been working on there. Um, I, I do still need to put up, put together the arc furnace and get that up and running so we can work on getting to the end, uh, which should be pretty interesting because better end is in this pack, and that's not a mod that I've ever interacted with before. So it should be pretty cool. Um, asphalt concrete will actually be kind of nice, and I, I do want to start, like, decorating around here. I just, I need the resources to do it. And and I'm, I have some ideas for what I want to do, but I don't have the, you know, like the wood and the resources to, the decorative resources to do it. You know, I've got a bunch of these, but yeah. Um, that's another reason why I want to get refined storage set up so that I can start automating turning the, you know, granite cobblestone back into granite and stuff like that. Because right now I just have to grab it out of there and throw it in here and that would, and that'll take a little while. Anyway, on with what I have been doing. So we went down the tech tree. We finally did, actually, I did actually make a printed circuit board, um, which is just really easy. And I have, in fact, been going through, as you can see, I've got a bunch of empty PCBs still in my inventory. So I have been going through over here, running them through the light box, and then running the empty PCB into the etching tank and getting the unassembled PCB. And then, as you can see, I've been running them through and just dumping them into the storage system for now. But... Uh, we can actually make a bunch more since we just got a bunch of rewards. So now I have a bunch of printed circuit boards. Nine of them. I don't think is enough to do uh, the next thing in here because we need to make all of these guys. But let's see. How many of these need? We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Uh, we could actually do that. So we'll just start here with the assembly laser. Uh, what are we missing? We're missing glass, and we are missing cylinders. So, um, while that is cooking, we can keep going through the rest of these. So that's everything that I've done in the tech tree. The next thing that I've been working on is the magic tree. So I did finally go ahead and just toss the thingamajiggers into, uh, the pool to get that for Batania, and I went ahead and built a mana enchanter, uh, which I will show you over here. I don't know why it gave it gave me one spark. One spark is not an uh, you need two, like minimum you need two. Ugh, I don't know. So anyway, we have our mana enchanter right here. Everything set up. You can mix and match the flowers, which I didn't wasn't sure if you could do or not. And then, of course, we have the mana pool there. So I'll just put the stupid spark on it because, I, I mean, I need another one to be able to do anything with it. So, but we'll just put it there for now. Um, yeah. So anyway, I got the mana enchanter set up. This will be handy for more than a few things going forward. Um, specifically with blood magic. So as you can see, I've been doing quite a bit in blood magic. Made the various uh, charms. I didn't realize that it actually gave you another one. Made the sentient sword, which also gives me looting three. This gem here gives me sweeping edge three. This gem here gives me sharpness five. And this guy right here gives me unbreaking. And then this gives me the demon crucible. So these books are nice um, because what we can do is we can actually combine all these together onto one book and then we can use the mana enchanter to put all of them onto my sentient sword along with mending. What was, what was I? I was working on something and I've forgotten what it was. Let's go use... I'm going to borrow your anvil. Oh, right. The alchemical reaction chamber was the other one that I actually ended up making. Um, this guy... It's right over here, that right there. Um, the nice thing that this thing does is it lets you deconstruct your previous orbs. So the other, the other lower tier orbs, you can turn them back into what they were 
before you infused them with blood. Anyway, let's get to making this. So we need to make some pneumatic cylinders. Uh, cannon barrel. Okay. I almost have enough for that. I believe we just use these. No. Okay. That, 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 that. Gives me cannon barrel. Gives me pneumatic cylinder. As you can see, I've, I've also made a lot of these plastic sheets. Um, we need another pneumatic cylinder. Also, why? Oh, it has to be red glass. Why does it have to be red glass? That's dumb. Whatever. All right. So we just need one more pneumatic cylinder, which means we need another cannon barrel, which means we need more of that, which means we need another one of those. This is another reason why I really want to get my hands on refined storage, because the refined storage, I can automate all of this. You can just build recipes to do all of this, and then I just click a button or two, and you're good to go. You don't have to sit and mess around with it for hours. Uh, we need some more plastic sheets. Now we can go ahead and make another printed circuit board, which we can then use to make the final thing, the assembly platform. All right. So that has finally allowed us to create the this 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 set and gives us a bunch of assembly programs. Uh, but now we've unlocked advanced pressure tube. So we can actually make one of these. And then finally, we'll be able to make the aerial interface, which I probably won't be using. How is my mana enchanter doing? To turn my magnet off when I come over here. Otherwise, I will uh, s sloop up the... Uh... Yeah. Uh, it's actually pretty full. All right, cool. And then the other thing... Oh, the last thing that I want to do before we call it quits for today... Is, is actually throw the potato into the mana pool. Is make a tiny potato. <laughs> yeah, I love that you can give them tools and stuff too. <laughs> and we have the advancement, just be friends. Make a tiny potato and pet it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But the Batania, whoever, the guy that designed Batania is definitely an odd duck. So, but anyway, I think that is going to just about do it for this episode. Um, there's definitely, there's a few more things that we can do here and there. Yeah, so anyway, uh, I think that's just about going to do it for today. There's a few projects that I need to work on um, that I'm just going to do in between videos. Uh, like I need to go back into the nether, track down one of those uh, blaze spawners, silk touch it, and get it back here. And then we can set up a blazing blood farm. I'm going to work on upgrading all of this to... Oh, that's why I was short printed circuit boards. I'm dumb. Um, but I'm going to work on, ref on upgrading my storage network to using refined storage uh, rather than using the simple storage network. Not that there's anything wrong with simple storage network. I just, I want the auto craft. I want the, the automation being able to auto craft stuff. And you can't do that with simple storage. So as well as interfacing with the machines that I have set up a little bit better because like I have, you know, my assembler here, and I've actually uh, further upgraded it so I can just put oak logs in here and it'll give me treated wood planks. With with refined storage, I can just pop a, a crafter right here and tell it that oak going in will produce 
will produce treated planks coming out and then I am you know then I don't have to mess around with it same with my metal press here I can set this up with an auto crafter and it'll it'll go from there so yeah there's a lots lots of auto crafting that I can do um, I'm pretty sure I can link my fluid all of my fluid tanks into refined storage and actually you can even store fluid in refined storage uh, which I might end up doing is just take down these fluid tanks and move all of them into the refined storage network instead. Um, so yeah, but there's a there's a lot we can do, and I'm eager to get to that point. Um, we do also have in the magic tree here this whole little path right here where we need to go into the blood magic dungeon so that ought to be kind of fun but that's one that we're going to save for uh, either a video or I might do it as a live stream so uh, you know in either way you are going to want to be following here on um, YouTube Subscribe here on YouTube. That's what it is. You know, you want to subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, while you're down there, you can also hit the like button. Let me know what's going on in there. And more importantly, let YouTube know that, hey, this channel is worth promoting a little bit more. Get some more people in here to watch stuff. We're getting uh, actually close. Well, kind of getting close to having 100 subscribers. Once we get 100 subscribers, we can I can change the channel name or the channel URL, to something that's a little bit more human-readable, make it easier to share, make it easier to tell other people about the channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, help me out, help you out with all of that. Um, if you are interested in catching these things live, I do stream on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It is twitch.tv slash sillysnowfox. And like I said, we might be doing some more in this pack. We've done a few. We uh, did our initial nether exploration on a live stream. And we might do the blood magic in the live, the blood magic dimension in the live stream as well. In fact, I think I probably will. Because that seems like the kind of thing that would be fun to do on a live stream. So you should look forward to seeing that. Um, Hit the follow button over there on Twitch. Twitch will let you know when you when I go live. You can also check the schedule. That will tell you when I stream in your time zones. And of course, if you can't make it on Twitch, I do upload all of my VODs here on YouTube. So make sure, again, make sure you subscribe so you catch those VODs as they come live. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure that's about it. I hope you guys are having yourselves a wonderful day, wonderful evening, whatever time of day it happens to be for you. I hope it's going well for you. I think that's about it. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. Until then, have yourselves a wonderful day. I said that already. Have a good one. Happy Minecrafting, guys.